Everyone loves a classic hero story. It's true. The protagonist facing tragedy, rising from the ashes, help avenging his past and helping others in the process. It's a great storyline, it's true. It's been in place for comic book authors since the creation of Superman in, 19, in 1938. But right now, forget about it. What about the people that are simply too odd for society to accept? The people with one too many quirks or abilities that put them just outside of society's parameters for fantastic. These unlikely outcasts are Marvel's X-Men, coin the strangest superheroes of all. The year is 1963, and Stan Lee is on a roll. He's an accomplished employee of the Marvel Company, having already written hit comics such as The Amazing Spider-Man, The Incredible Hulk, and The Fantastic Four, with a select team of illustrators, including Jack Kirby. He's used all different types of background stories, from gamma radiation gone horribly wrong, to radioactive spider bites, to science experiments gone awry. All these background stories are well and good, but Lee needs something new, something entirely different. So he makes reference to a sci-fi novel published by Wilhelm H. Shiraz in 1953, titled Children of the Atom. Shiraz's work spoke of a future in which society feared a group of people born with genetic mutations and abilities, and the pros, cons, and consequences of those, those abilities. This background story would apply to every single character that would become a part of the X-Men universe. However, for a comic book to be successful, the plot needs to be solid. But Stanley is skilled at doing that as each issue comes around, so we'll come back to that later. Individual characters, however, are another story entirely. Stan Lee is known for supporting the underdog, most well known as his work in the Spider-Man Chronicles with the leading protagonist Peter Parker, who represented the nerdy computer and science geek of the 1960s. Going along with the trends of his other hit comics, every character in the X-Men would have his or her own demons that Stan Lee would later address. With these background stories in place, Stan Lee would create a cast of characters that would become famous in the Marvel comic universe. Some of these characters included Charles Xavier, a British telepath who was paralyzed below the waist and wheelchair bound, also known as Professor X, and Eric Fletcher, a metal manipulator and Jewish Holocaust survivor, also known as Magneto. These two men would become the classic arch enemies of the Silver Age of comics, being the adult leaders of their respective groups of mutants. Xavier ran a school exclusively for mutants called Xavier's Academy for Gifted Youngsters, where characters like Jean Grey for Phoenix, Hank McCoy or Beast, Scott Summers for Skyclops, and Martin Worthington III for Angel, later to become Archangel, got their education and training for their individual abilities. Lencher, on the other hand, ran an organization called the Brotherhood of Mutants, with his illegitimate children, Wanda and Pietro Maximoff, known as the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver respectively, along with other mutants, like Mystique, formerly known as Raven Darkholm. Raven Darkholm was one of the first to perform the phrase mutant and proud. The, uh, the Brotherhood was known to the X-Men as the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. So now Lee has a theoretical light and dark side, but what are they fighting for? Well, this is where Lee's leadership skills came in. The month prior to September 1963, a major event in the timeline of the civil rights movement occurred. On August 28, 1963, more than 200,000 American citizens gathered in Washington to protest for their rights of employment and beyond. On this day in history, the protest ended with Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech. With his inspiration in place, Stan Lee set up scenarios in which his adult protagonist, or Professor X, and antagonist, Magneto, represented the two sides of gaining civil rights for the minorities. Professor X represented a Martin Luther King Jr. character, or a pacifist who encouraged peaceful negotiation and only used violence when absolutely necessary, whereas Lencher favored more towards the methods of Malcolm X, who encouraged more violent and insistent actions by his followers to achieve their demands. Both men were fighting for the equal rights of mutants, just like these two famed civil rights leaders were fighting for the equal rights of the African American population of the United States. Lee set up a morally ambiguous plot line is rare in comic books. Normally in comic books, there is a definitive good and bad side. No question as to who's the hero. But Lee made his readers question their morals by taking inspiration from a recent politically charged and controversial event. Lee was one of the first to create a plot line paralleling the events of his day and not using a supervillain that was magic or power charged. This is what makes Stan Lee such a leader. Lee made his readers, who wanted to escape reality, look back on their reality and examine their lives to an unparalleled degree. 
In addition to his real life inspiration, Lee created a diverse cast of characters that was unequal to any that came before it. The X-Men series featured one of the first disabled superheroes that was not a sidekick or damsel in distress, like Barbara Gordon of the DC Nightwing series. This character was the leader of the X-Men, or Professor X. The X-Men series also featured a Jewish character who had more than a supporting role and had a historically significant background. This character was Eric Wencher, who was a German Holocaust survivor who had survived the torture of Sebastian Shaw. In addition to these milestones of character traits, Lee created a cast of characters from all over the world. Xavier hailed from England, Lencher from Germany, in addition to Aurora Monroe, or Storm, from Eastern Kenya, Kurt Wagner, or Nightcrawler, also from Germany, and Sean Cassidy, or Banshee, from Scotland. Suffice to say, the X-Men universe is large and diverse. After creating a groundbreaking base for the series, Lee and Kirby left the X-Men comics in 1966 to Roy Thomas and Werner Roth, who took them over. There is only one problem with writing a series of comics that goes outside the traditional parameters of comic book writing. It didn't sell. The original X-Men series was a fourth-tier Marvel comic, which means its sales were pretty low. Despite the fact that the task of writing the X-Men changed many times throughout the 1960s, its sales only increased a little. Roy Thomas and Neil Adams tried to reinvigorate the series' lagging sales, but were unsuccessful, as the series was discontinued in 1969 with issue number 66, March 1970. The X-Men faded into the background of the Marvel comic universe, only to be brought back in 1975 with the giant X-Men. In addition to being reintroduced many, many times, the X-Men universe grew, adding new mutants like Lorna Dane and Kitty Pryde. The X-Men were crossed over into other Marvel series like Captain America, The Avengers, and The Fantastic Four. They were refaced by famed writers such as Joss Whedon and has been renamed many times. For example, The Uncanny X-Men. Despite having a rough start, the X-Men franchise is still going strong, having just celebrated its 50th anniversary in 2013. New X-Men comics are still being written today, but they have also been translated into movies. The X-Men franchise currently features seven movies, with a new one slated to come out in 2016. The pictures featured famed actors, such as Hugh Jackman, Ian McKellen, and Patrick Stewart. They have a large following, and audiences are anticipating the last of the prequel trilogy. The movies are important to mention because it shows that the X-Men are still relevant in a new and developing society. The questions of civil rights and right and wrong still ring true to young older generations shows that our social standards have not changed as much as we'd like to think. The question of civil rights is important to resolve as we move into a new generation that questions the standards of police brutality and outdated gender roles. The X-Men is a timeless comic because there are always issues within our society that need to be questioned and changed. Although the rocky start of this monumental series seems to be an event in the distant, foggy past, it is important to acknowledge that Stan Lee made a difference when he decided to break down the barriers of the comic book industry. Stan Lee led a whole new generation of comic book writers to write influential plot lines based on their social surroundings and that were more inspiring to their readers. So Stan Lee is it's hugely important in that aspect. He gave his comics a heart and a conscience that was special, and he made his readers question their own realities. Stan Lee leaves behind in his legacy his graceful and timeless contribution to the comic book industry. There is always an underdog that needs encouragement, and Stan Lee will always be there with his solid plot lines and emotionally deep characters to give them the proper encouragement they need to achieve whatever dreams they wish. So, with that, I look back to the past and into the future, and I say to you, mutant and pro.